prepare for Nerdgasm. Hey, what's up Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, aka Barnacles. Got another little unboxing for you guys today. Um, the video station needed a little bit of a hard drive upgrade and uh, I wanted to do some testing beforehand so I picked up this little gizmo. It's from Mono Prices, it's Communicator C1 SATA hard drive docking station combo. It's uh, basically so you can dock 3.5 inch and 2.5 inch hard drives right into a bay conveniently placed on your desktop. And it also has a multi uh, card reader in it for memory. So the compact flash, SD, all that stuff. So it's kind of a neat little combo. I can set it on my desk, plug it in, and I have a lot of old hard drives laying around that I, uh, that I keep backups of like when I build a new computer for instance. And this will just give me an easy way to swap them in and out and get data off them without having to install them in the computer. So let's go ahead and open it up. I really like Monoprice. I spend quite a bit of money with them, uh, mainly on cables. If you ever need cables, you should go to Monoprice because they're just they're, they're cheaper, um, in, in my opinion. But uh, here's the dock. It's actually a lot larger than I thought. So looking at it, the little back plate is not removable. So if you need it to fit in a low profile space, make sure it clears your monitors up above. Um, down here on the bottom, it sports X memory, SD, compact flash, uh, MS. It's got two USB ports. I didn't realize that. So it's got USB ports right on the back of it. And then, uh, uh, or on the front of it, rather. On the back of it, it's got a power input, DC 12 volts, an on-off switch, and a USB cable. It looks like it comes with software, but seldom do you need software with these because these are just standard ATAPI devices. So you just plug them in. They just work. Um, and it comes with a manual. Okay, let's open up these boxes. Okay, it looks like we have a USB cable. Doesn't look like a very long one. Let's go ahead and take it out and take a look. Okay, so it looks like the cable is about three feet in length. So um, for my application, I'll probably use one of my old long, longer cables. Ugh. Open sesame. Oh man, I about swallowed that. All right, so now I got an AC adapter here. It's 12 volts at two amps. Pretty standard. Let's go ahead and plug that in. Throw all this away. And that's, that's all that came with it. And we're not going to need the software, I don't think. So we'll just go ahead and set this all aside. Okay, let's go ahead and plug it into power. It's in the off position. Um, it's pretty lightweight. I mean, I don't know how durable it is. It'll take some time. Looking through there, you can see that it's got a place for a two and a half inch drive. And if you put a three and a half inch drive, the flap drops down. So, and it even has a backup button. That's probably what the software is for is you can probably install the software. And if you want to back up your computer to a hard drive in this bay, you can just push the button and do the backup. Um, I'm not going to use it for that purpose, but if you're looking for a backup solution, that's probably not a bad way to go. I don't know how high I would rate mono price or for reliability on backup software, but, uh, but you know, it's, it's, it's definitely an option. Let's go ahead and plug it in. It's USB 2.0, but I'm going to go ahead and plug it into my USB 3.0 hub. Okay. It says here we're installing drivers. Shows up as a generic USB hub, a composite device, mass storage controller, and the generic uh, uh, devices for all the different memory cards. And right now it's searching Windows Update for the mass storage device driver. Okay, it found it. Now it's installing. I'm running Windows 7 64-bit Ultimate on this machine, so it looks like it's 100% inbox supported. So let's go ahead and close that. So let's go ahead and try a couple things. I have a compact flash card here. Let's go ahead and stick that in the front. Okay, there it is right there. Shows up as a removable disc. Fantastic. If we open up computer, shows up as a removable O. Let's go ahead and put in an SD card. I have an iFi card here. Okay, shows right up. Canon DC, very fast. My other card reader doesn't even show up that fast. And you can see you can access both of them simultaneously. So you can actually use this to copy data between cards, which is nice because some of the card readers, you can only have one card in at a time. Okay, so now let's go ahead and bust open this. This is a Western Digital Red 3 terabyte drive. I picked up two of these for the video recording box so that I can do some more game video recording. Because the thing about game video recording is if you're not recording all the time and capturing everything, you miss so much good stuff. So I'm going to try to get in the habit of doing that. Okay, so all you do with the drive is you just put it against the back plate here. The width is predetermined. There is a little bit of slop in there, but you just drop the drive in, and it should fall right onto the connector. And there we go. I can hear it spinning up. Uh, Western Digital Red is an incredibly quiet drive. Okay, it says it's installing device driver software. It found it, WDC, WD30. And now if I open up the disk manager, 
If you want a shortcut, do a search for disk mgmt.msc. That'll take you right to the disk manager. If you don't feel like going through the control panel. It says it found a new disk. Let's go find it down here. Okay, so it looks like it found two, uh, two allotments, one of two gigabyte and one of uh, 746 gigabytes because it's a three terabyte drive. Um, so I should be able to create a new simple volume. It looks like the maximum size that I can create with USB through this thing is uh, the partition size is two terabyte. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a two terabyte partition and assign it to drive letter P. Okay, form a quick format. I'm going to create another volume once that's done. So that's formatting right now. Depending on if the drive is new or used, if it's a new drive, you can go ahead and just do a quick format. It's much faster. See, it's already done formatting and I have a new two terabyte volume. Um, but if you have a disk that already has data on it and you want to ensure that the data is destroyed, then do a long format. Don't do a quick format because then instead of just wiping the file allocation table, it'll go and overwrite every single bit on the hard drive, which is nice because you can find bad sectors, which a quick format won't find, and you can also ensure that your data was destroyed. Um, that doesn't exactly mean your data is not recoverable from the right people because you have to do something called a low-level format to completely permanently erase your data. And that's where it overwrites each sector on the drive so many times that the underlying data is completely unrecoverable. All right, so it looks like we have, uh, oh, interesting. So it does show 746 gigabytes unallocated, but it won't let me create a volume. So it's looking like the limitation on this device might be two terabyte. I did a little bit of research on this while I was creating the video, and it turns out that to create a three terabyte partition or a partition greater than two terabytes in Windows, you have to actually have the disk partitioned as GPT not as MBR. The disk actually came as MBR, which limits the partition size to two terabytes or on the USB storage device, a total of two terabytes. Um, however, I was able in Disk Manager to simply right click on it and say, convert GPT disk because it was, it was originally set up as MBR. So that's all I had to do. Now that I did that, I now have the entire space, all 2.8 gigabytes formatted available to me and I'm able to create it. So Hopefully you guys made it to the end of the video so you could pick up that bit before you comment. But if not, that's cool. I'll respond to your comments. Um, and I hope that solves some problems for some people looking why they can't create partitions larger than two terabytes, which I actually found uh, quite a few searching on Bing. And there you have it, guys. So pretty simple little device. They're inexpensive, 20 or 30 bucks. Um, sometimes you can find deals on versions of them, uh, diff different manufacturer on uh, Newegg but they all probably pretty much work the same way. If you can find a USB 3.0 version that's a little bit more modern. All right, guys, well, this was another quick unboxing from Nerdgasm for you. I hope uh, it gave you guys a Nerdgasm. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try to get back to them. You guys know that I try to reply to everybody. If you haven't yet come over to the Facebook play page, please look on my main channel. There's a link right there. And uh, come over and sign up because I do most of my communication through Facebook. And if you hate Facebook, I also use Twitter too. So you can click on the link and join me on Twitter. All right, it's been great, guys. Until next time.